welcome back to Making Meaning. I'm Miss Keller. Today, we're going to finish up our unit on nonfiction wondering. We are going to finish reading our text, Spinning Spiders, and we're going to look for some answers to our questions and ask some more questions. For today's lesson, you will need a talk partner. It could be a family member or a stuffed animal or your pet. You will also need paper and pencil for today's lesson. So I'm going to give you a moment to go grab those things, and then we'll get started. Wonderful. Before we read, I'm curious to know, what is something that you learned from this text in our last lesson? Stop and think. And when you're ready, go ahead and turn to your partner using the I learned sentence stem. Right. One thing we learned is that spider webs are everywhere. There's one. There's one upstairs there. They could be found in garages. We also learned that they are called arachnids and are part of the arachnid family, which has scorpions. Maybe you were sharing how the spiders eat. their web and they inject the poison. Today, as we read, we're going to be doing a lot of think time and we're going to be doing a lot of I learned blank or wondering. I wonder blank. We're also going to be using those sentence stems in our writing. Before I start, I want to review our wonders from yesterday in our last lesson. I wonder how many legs spiders have, how many kinds of spiders are there in the world, why do spiders make spider webs, do all spiders make spider webs, and how big do spiders get? So as we read today, look for, those, for answers to those questions. The web helps the spider to get food it needs. It also protects the spider from its enemies. If an enemy touches the web, the spider feels it. It runs away to safety. Snakes, frogs, birds, and lizards love to eat spiders. So do wasps and other spiders. So there's the snake. There's the web and there's the spider running away. Let's give you an example of what the text is saying. Spider webs come in all shapes and sizes. The webs may be neat or jumbled, that means mixed up. The webs may be neat or jumbled, flat or bowl shaped. Each kind of web is different. The web of the common house spider is called a tangled web. The spider attaches long, loose threads to a wall or window, a ceiling or a corner, the bottom of a table or chair. Then the spider joins the thread together with, a more, with more threads going in every direction. What new things did we learn about spider webs from this part of the book? Stop and think. going to use I learned blank. When you're ready, you can turn to your partner. Something new that I learned was that they could be neat or jumbled. The spider webs could be neat or jumbled. That was new information to me. Something else that may have been new to you is that 
they each kind of web is different. The grass spider usually spins a funnel web in tall grasses or low bushes. The gra it looks like a short white ice cream cone. The grass spider hides at the bottom of the cone. When an insect lands on the top part, the grass spider dashes up and grabs its meal. I just heard one of my old vocabulary words. Dashes. Do you put your hands on your head? The platform spider weaves flat sheet webs in trees or shrubs. Those are bushes. weaves flat sheet webs in trees or shrubs. It spins separate threads above the sheet web. If a flying insect hits one of these threads, it falls into the sheet. There's the spider, there's the insect. The garden spider builds orb webs or on tall grass or flowers. First, it weaves a strong thread on which to hang the web. Next, it spins the outside threads of the web. So step one, step two. Then it adds threads that go out from the center, like the spokes of a wheel. Okay, that's the bars on the inside of the wheel. Finally, the spider connects the spokes with coils of, coils are sticky circles, many circles. Finally, the spider connects the spokes with coils of sticky silk. The ogre-faced spider, an ogre-faced spider is a spider whose face looks really ugly. Like a giant's face. The ogre-faced spider carries its web with it. It hangs from a branch, holding the web in its four front legs. When an insect comes near, the ogre face spider catches it in the web. Not all spiders make webs. The bolus spider spins a thread of silk with a sticky stick silk ball at the end. The spider swings the line at an insect. The insect gets stuck on the sticky ball of thread. What did, else did you learn about spider webs? Go ahead, when you are ready, turn to your partner. I got my phone in and they said that they learned the ogre faced spider carries its web with it to catch its prey. Someone else was sharing that they learned that the garden spider builds their orb webs. The biggest spider of all doesn't carry a web to catch its prey. It doesn't even need a web. The tarantula can be up to 10 inches across. That's as wide as one of your dinner plates. Because they are so large, tarantulas usually eat small birds, snakes, mice, frogs, and even fish, as well as insects. Tarantulas can live for about 20 years older than you are. Altogether, spiders eat millions of insects every day of the year. Many of these insects can harm or annoy people. In this way, I just saw hands go on their head for the vocabulary of annoy. Yes. Many of these insects can harm or annoy people. In this way, spiders help us live better. 
Spiders are also food for many different birds, fish, and frogs. So if you see a spider, let it be. Spiders are an important part of the earth. Can you see the spider on this page? What reasons does the, spi does the author give to support the idea that spiders are an important part of life on earth? A big reason the author gives that they are important is because they eat millions of insects every day of the year. And they harm us, they can harm us or annoy us, bother us. Let's go back to our wonder chart. Were any of these answered in the text today? What, how does the text support that? That's right. This one was answered today. Do all spiders make spider webs? I'm gonna put a star on there. If I go back in the text, I can see when it's the part that was talking about spider webs, says not all spiders make webs. This one was the example that they gave. It shoots the silk string out to grab the insect. Yes, I agree. Also, how big do spiders get? We started to get an answer to that. We might want to do more research on that one because it didn't give us a full answer, but it did tell us about one type of spiders, how big they get. It told us that tarantulas can be as wide as a dinner plate or 10 inches across. So I want you now to think about what is something surprising that you learned from this text or interesting that you learned? I'm gonna give you a minute to think. And I'm going to ask you to write what you are still wondering about spiders after reading this text. Got it in your brain? Okay. I'm going to give you the sentence sentence now. It's going to be your turn to write. We have I learned blank and I wonder blank. Look familiar? You can go ahead and write while I'm writing. And if you're not quite done when I'm done with your thought, you can add to it after the lesson. I learned tarantulas. I want this open because I want to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Usually eat usually eat small birds snakes frogs and You may have found something else surprising that you learned, but use that black sentence stem right there to get you started. Now, my wondering is where do tarantulas live? I wonder where tarantulas 
Lisa Ran She Was. Yep. Liz. That was not answered in the text. That is still something I'm wondering about. You might have something else that you're still wondering about. Go ahead and finish writing that now. And then you can go with an adult and look up on the internet you're wondering and see if you can get some more information about spiders there. All right, scholars. We have some more work to do. We have some new words we're going to go over. I saw some hands already going on heads today for vocabulary from the past. We're going to go over some new vocabulary. Yes, in our last lesson we learned about the words solid and dull. Today, our first word connects with the word solid. It's mushy. Say mushy. I love the way that sounds when I say it. Mushy. Okay? Mushy means not quite solid and not quite liquid. It's in between. So if we're thinking back to the text, it has the part with the spider injecting the poison. The fly was solid, and once it injects the poison, it becomes mushy. So it's softer. When we play in the snow, the snow can get mushy, right? It's not quite water and it's not quite solid like ice. It's squishy. This applesauce is mushy. It's not solid anymore like the apple. It's crushed up. It still has some little pieces of apple in it, so it's mushy. We're going to play solid or mushy. I want you to think. I'm going to ask a question. And is it solid? Why? Is it mushy? Why? A frozen icicle. Solid or mushy? Why? I think an icicle is blank because blank. Try that with me. I think an icicle is blank because blank. When you're ready, go ahead and share with your partner. Yes, I think, I agree with you. I think an icicle is solid because it's hard. It's mainly frozen into an ice. It's got the word ice in there, icicle. Let's try another one. Cereal that has been soaking in a bowl of milk. Is it solid or mushy? How do you know? I think cereal soaking in milk is blank because blank. Try that with me. I think cereal soaking in milk is blank because blank. <laughs> I heard someone say, I think cereal soaking in milk is mushy because the cereal isn't hard anymore. It, once the milk gets in it, it gets bigger and expands and it gets a little softer. And if you stir it up, it breaks apart into littler pieces, kind of like the applesauce. All right. Our next word is my favorite, slurp. Say that with me, slurp. You kind of, it's an onomatopoeia, right? It sounds like the word slurp. When you slurp, slurp. Mm. This little boy is slurping up noodles. In our text, the spider slurps 
up the inside. It's not chewing it. You. I'm going to drink an imaginary drink two ways. And I want you to tell me is way one slurping or is way two slurping. Okay. My drink. That's way one. Here's way two. Which one was slurping, way one or way two, and how do you know? Way two was slurping because I was sucking in the liquid of my drink, making a really loud noise. It was not quiet. The first way was a sip. It was a little drink and it was quiet. I have so enjoyed learning with you these last couple of weeks and are making me lessons of wondering. I'm going to send you off one last time to do some practice on your own. And I hope to get to see you again in the near future for some more lessons. For today's IDR, again, you're going to need nonfiction. It's okay to read the same book twice, and I've talked about this before in the, our lessons. I think it's so important to read something more than once because you get more information the next time you read it. So I'm doing my BATS book again because I really wanted to get as much information in there as I could. So first thing I do is I read the text. I marked in my text spots that I was learning things. And then after 20 minutes, I'm going to take some time and write about my text. This is where I wrote about my text. My book is Bats by Rebecca Rissman. This book is about how bats survive, where they live, and how they get food. I know that because I've read the whole book already and each section talks about those things that I wrote down. I didn't just say it was about bats, okay? Because of course it's about bats, but I want to give know that it's more than just that. It's about how they survive. Because I read a section in here about where they live, what they eat, um, where do they go in the winter to survive? How can people help bats survive? Each of those sections that I read supported that statement. I marked a spot that I found something surprising or interesting that I learned. I'm going to reread it to you now so you know how I wrote it. How can you spot bats? Bats are most active one or two hours after the sun sets. Bats do not fly in smooth lines like most birds. Bats fly in jerky zigzags. So I marked that because I found that to be interesting. So then I could write at that. Something surprising I learned is bats fly in zigzags. So like this. I had no idea. I just thought they zoomed across the sky. And then I have my wondering. After I finished reading, I still have a wonder. I wonder which continent has the most bats. Remember this section we talked about in our last lesson? That they live on every continent? I think that's fascinating. Does one continent have more bats than another? So I wrote that down so that then I could go grab my grown-up and we could go research that a little bit more. All right, scholars. You've been working so hard. Keep growing your brains. I miss you, and I will see you soon.